Hello, everybody. Mary Jane and I, we are um, representing all our group number five, are going to uh, uh, talk to you about what we have spoken uh, during this last week. And the question uh, is, is CCS a viable option for developing countries? Uh, from the first day, the first idea came to our minds was like, uh, why should it be viable for developing countries if it's not for viable yet? Right? So our answer is no, but for the moment, right? <laughs> we have to, to start by, for the beginning, uh, what we understand uh, with viability. Uh, in this term, we are uh, agrouping the main things that we think it goes, right? So uh, we have the ready technology, we, we, we know where to store it, so is any available storage place? Do we have the money? Uh, does, do they allow us to to implement this technology there? So, before we go any further, there's a really important disclaimer. Please read it, and I'll help you. As a group, we understand that grouping the countries together as developing is very general and does not account for individual situations. However, for the purpose of this talk, that's exactly what we're going to do. Thank you for understanding. <laughs> so, first of all, we want to say uh, two arguments uh, that could be uh, said by the developed countries side. So, why CCS could be implemented in developing countries? So the first main argument could be like, like the, the big growth that is occurring in the great main developing countries, as we can say, China, China and India or Brazil. Actually, as we know, China is growing like two gigawatts per, per week. And they are growing, they are demanding more, so they are building more power plants. And this is also an opportunity to implement a CCS system, because we know that if we implement it, it's a new power plant is going to, to have less energy penalty than in an old one, right? So, the other one is that uh, we all are conscious that we, the developed countries, are uh, the ones who emit it the most, and maybe we can consider ourselves the cause of the problem. But the problem has become global, so the solution must be global. And Maybe, maybe all the countries must imply in the solution. So we've gone from a developed country's perspective, perhaps, to a global idea, and now I'm going to present a developing country's perspective. There's going to be three reasons why, perhaps, developing countries might not support CCS in their country. The concept of developed countries saying they're richer we don't want to try it out here. We're going to try it out over there. And the poorer countries, therefore receiving the potential environmental injustice that goes along with that. The third reason that we're giving that CCS might not be the best for developing countries is the lack of infrastructure and the economic resources. There's a lack in money for investing in infrastructure. Therefore, for example, they might need three power plants in order to increase the quality of life. Like we said, you need more energy to have a higher quality of life. So they want three power plants, but they've only got enough money for two power plants. However, at the cost of CCS, they'll only have enough money for one power plant, which means they'll only have enough money to, or enough power to increase the quality of life by one power plant. Like we said before, though, these three were generalizations. Developing countries are actually extremely diverse. Therefore, we do need country-specific solutions. And we're going to give just brief examples of two of the most interesting countries in the emissions world, China and India. First, I'm going to talk about India. India has a growing energy demand and they cannot supply it right now. In fact, approximately 50% of 
of India's population doesn't have electricity. Therefore, the high energy supply that comes from adding CCS to an energy plant makes CCS really unattractive to the Indian population that doesn't have enough electricity. Another comment would be, can we even store it in India? And it seems like India doesn't have the best geologic storage possibilities, at least onshore. Moving on to China. I want to talk about the geologic um, space in China. China is a big country, so probably they'll have space, but there hasn't been much research done, so there would have to be a lot of investment in exploration, which would cost money. Um, and differently from India, China, on the other hand, actually does have 98% um, of their population with access to electricity, but it's not enough electricity to do everything that they want to do. Uh, China's also put forward the argument that if they're controlling their population with regulations and policies, that's actually a way to control emissions. CCS is not the only way to control emissions. Finally, though, China has been agreeable to the concept of CCS. They um, would accept financial support, wouldn't we all, for CCS, and uh, they're willing to international, for international cooperation to work towards um, developing CCS. And speaking about international cooperation, we cannot avoid to speak about CCS in CDM. For those who don't, want, who don't know what, what is CDM, it's an acronym for Clean Developing Countries. Of <laughs> the Clean Development Mechanism, sorry. And uh, it's a tool established in Kyoto Protocol for reducing emissions, right? So they give incentives to uh, developed countries, companies or countries, to invest in uh, emission reduction in uh, developing countries. So there are some positive uh, arguments that go to have CCS and CDM, but there are also some drawbacks. The potential positive reasons to put CCS and CDM is that uh, we are going to reduce the emissions there. So, I mean, that's good. But also we are going to promote other projects in developing nations. How do you reconcile those two points? That's a good question. Maybe we weren't clear. Um, the point would be that if we wanted, if we decided it was the right thing to do, not that we're saying it is or is not, but if we decided it was the right thing to do, then we could do that. But we talked about actually having demonstration projects, I think the slide, I hope the slide said, in developed countries first. Um, we thought it should happen in the developed world before it was exported. Thank you very much. That's a very good presentation. You've reached your conclusion of no. Is there one issue uh, that, if it was different, might have changed your conclusion? Yes, it's a big, uh, very big challenge to go. And the main issue is, first of all, the cost, and of course, the long term liability. And uh, keeping the cost in view, uh, most of the developing countries uh, uh, will put a point that uh, it will make the cost of electricity for them beyond their purchasing power. And if we address the cost and work on liability, things that should first happen is uh, working demonstrations in the developed world before we, we try to uh, implement. Uh, full-scale development in, in developing nations uh, such as uh, India where they don't even have 50% of electrification to the rest of their population. This can obviously not be one of their priorities on their own. So we, as developed nations, must uh, sort of prove the, prove the technology and then take it to them and help them uh, implement it within their own country. Okay.